Yes. Testing one, two, three. This is Mystic Moon Cafe. There you go. I can hear you. Am I self modulated? You're self modulated loudly behind the music. I've I've been self modulated every my early teen years. That are experts in various fields of the supernatural, paranormal, unexplained, and esoteric. So sit back and let us take you on a journey to educate, enlighten, and entertain as we broaden your horizons. Now here's your hosts, Wendy Schindler and Travis Short. And good evening. It's us here at Mystic Moon Cafe again. Hi, Travis. Hey, Wendy. How are you this evening? Oh, just peachy king. Weather in the storm. You're peachy king. Peachy king. <laughs> I don't know if that's How? better or worse than finer than frog hair, but uh, it's a close running I race. It is. Both of them have this, you know, this this almost invisible fur, fog hair, and peach fuzz and peachy <laughs> king. That works. I'm, right. I'm okay yeah. with that. I'm yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can. Yeah, I can go that way. So, did you weather the storms that you had, literally? Um, actually, there was a there was one that hit about six o'clock this evening, and uh, it was it was fast moving, came up on us fast. All the dogs were down here in my little my little hovel, and um, <laughs> and then the thunder was over, and it rained a buttload, which we need here in Kansas City. We've been in a drought for you know like all winter. And, but mm -hmm. uh, we didn't need it all at once, but it's all, it was all good. It blew over real quick. And then the dogs went out to pate and all that fun stuff. Uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Are you there? Oh, uh, yeah. There was a really weird sound. I thought we got disconnected. I've heard it once or twice myself here and I'm not sure. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Hmm. I'm not sure. Hmm. Interesting. A little bit of a pop noise, but. I don't think yeah. it's Skype. I think it's more of a power thing going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. <laughs> of course you were. So, how was your day, Travis? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you didn't Shut. stop for food, did you? I told you to stop for food. I did. I stopped for food. I, I broke down this afternoon about 10 minutes till 4 o'clock. And the, the grocery store uh, that's within walking distance of the radio station, they have these great little snack trays that have cubes of turkey, cheese, grapes, and crackers. And I went and grabbed one of those. Mm -hmm. And that was my lunch. But I have been going since 6 o'clock this morning. Oh, my, uh, my phone, My phone was ringing before 6. Uh, it was my morning board operator there at the radio station. There was all kinds of networking problems. He and I were troubleshooting for like the first 45 minutes trying to figure it out. That didn't work. So then, of course, by that point, I was already on the road driving, got there, and uh, it actually was a, an issue with our server. And apparently sometime overnight, the server and our server security detected some type of threat to our network, and it actually locked all the computers and disconnected the entire network, which is great because it was doing its job, exactly what you know we, we invested in this particular program for. The problem was, of course, there was no notification given to anyone, and when we don't have anyone from midnight to 6 a.m., when the morning guy comes in at 5.30 and he's trying to get networked and get into the commercial logs and the music beds and all that, and he can't because none of the commute, none of the com Computers are communicating, and none of them are networked, mm -hmm. uh, and then not being able to have access to the servers is quite a problem. So it took us till about 10 o'clock this morning. We got everything back up and running, everything networked and communicating, and all the bugs worked out. And when I left this evening, uh, about 5.15, everything was still running smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I, I dropped some groceries off to my kids this evening and then came straight in. And literally had just enough time to kind of uh, take a shower and pour a glass of wine and get the uh, my little studio here set up so we could broadcast. So it's been <laughs> it's been a it's been a nonstop day. Oh goody! What fun! What fun! Yes, all kinds of fun. So what mm -hmm. is we we've got we're, we're not we're not going to introduce our guest not yet um, because we've we've got a little housekeeping and house cleaning and shopkeeping and house shopping I don't know we got a bunch of stuff to do um, <laughs> we, we, right yeah okay <laughs> yeah whatever whatever he's mm -hmm. saying he he doesn't know what he's talking about um, 
great, great show last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very fun show uh, with Anna Martin and the Martin family legacy. Uh, very interesting woman. Uh, some, some very, uh, some great stories that she had to tell about the, the just the, the supernatural things that have occurred in her family. You know, I think that's for me. That's a very interesting concept. Is how these things tend to be familial and they tend to be inherited. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the reasons that I like Anna's story is it, uh, for me, it kind of has this, it resonates with the um, Steven Spielberg uh, miniseries that Sci-Fi did, Taken, which, you know, kind of showed four generations of like three or four different families and their interaction with especially UFO phenomena and things like that. So Anna's story for me is a very interesting kind of take because you don't, find a lot of people coming forward talking about the family aspect of their abductions and interactions with extraterrestrials and things like that. So I think she's a very interesting kind of kind of guest uh, to have. I'm looking forward to having her back on. Um, and in the coming week, in the coming weeks, the month of April, we've got some really cool shows lined up. Um, trying to pin down next week's guest, I haven't quite done that yet because he's hopping all over the freaking country, and I can't, <laughs> I can't catch Bill Bean long enough to get him to confirm his appearance next week. Well, he'll but be on a, if he finds a, out in time. <laughs> <laughs> so we, and then um, on the 12th, I think you've booked the 12th or is that one still open? No, the 12th is, uh, is doo -doo, Linda Godfrey. Um, with the, yes, yes. Um, dog man. Oh, Monsters Among Us is her, the newest yes. book. And yes, dog man and, and real, werewolves of or you, golly there's a whole list of them she she's written a lot of books she's very knowledgeable her original uh coming out of the closet there with all of these things was uh the beast of bray road that yes. that's her that's her shining star and then she's continued to shine and uh, very interesting. We, we've had her on. This would probably be like her fourth appearance, if I'm not mistaken. And we had her a couple times last year. Yes. Yep. Two or three times last year. So uh, looking forward to, to having her back on the following week, uh, the 19th. Uh, we have Nick Redfern coming back on um, another crypto, uh, uh, a crypto Zoologist. dude. Mm -hmm. uh, crypto. Yes. Well, you had to go technical i was just kind of uh, uh, neener, crypto neener. dude usually it's you <laughs> i know i know but I, I, i'm this particular program is i'm flying by the seat of my pants i really am i am like a a, a dry well uh mm -hmm. that is being pumped for air basically on this particular program tonight um I, I may end up being comic relief like I was when we had uh, rl king on the show i may just pipe in every now and then with just some really acerbic um Com, you know, comical kind of comments, and then fade back into the background. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> but we do have we have Nick coming back on. He's going to talk about his newest book, Secret Societies. Uh, and I'm hoping, fingers are crossed on this one, that we get copies of that before we actually. <laughs> I reached out to, I <laughs> I reached out to his publicist a couple of weeks ago and requested copies of his newest book mm -hmm. to be sent for review and for the show. She sent me copies of his most recent book, not the newest book, the most recent one being 365 Days of UFO Encounters, which we already have. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. So I've had to reach back out to try to get uh, get new ones sent. Um, okay, good. And then we're we're trying to get Cami. Anderson and Richard Estep back on to talk about the haunting at Asylum 49 uh, sometime there in the month of April. And uh, we're trying to get Andrea Perrin back on the show. Uh, be oh, was going to be fascinating to hear what's going on with her, her trilogy of books. I know that she was recently uh, in L.A. because she actually uh, bumped into Susan Bell just totally out of the blue at a <laughs> film convention. Of course. Uh, and Andrea, Andrea was there shopping uh, House of Darkness, House of Light trilogy uh, to some uh, – finance companies and, and backers trying to get the uh, the green light to turn those into a trilogy of movies. And she literally, uh, according to Susan Bell, they just literally backed into one another while handshaking and, and schmoozing. And it mm -hmm. just became, it became this great kind of family reunion for the two of them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're working on on that particular uh, guest and and several others that we're going to try to have back on. Uh, kind of reach back into last year to some of our guests and try to bring them back on. Uh, the co-authors of the Aztec UFO crash want to have them back on. Uh, want to try to get Nick and Linda both on simultaneously to talk cryptids, um, and I think that would be a very interesting type of roundtable discussion. Uh, I could talk Mothman. 
uh, Linda can talk dog man and uh, Nick can talk about, uh, you know, his, his fascination with Loch Ness monster and Bigfoot and, and the other cryptids and, and the Chupacabra, uh, which he's done quite a bit of research in. So I think that could be an, a very interesting kind of, uh, cryptid round table. Well, this could, uh, our, uh, our guest tonight is he, he writes urban fantasy, but mm-hmm. he is starting a new mini series, I guess, um, about, uh, Mason Dixon, uh, Monster Hunter. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it I deals like it. with it deals with uh, the cryptoid crypto cryptozoology critters <laughs> in like Missouri. It. Yeah. So okay. you know, you guys may be able to talk a bit about that as well. Yeah, that'll be that'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully so, yes. Yeah. So we've got you know lots of great shows uh, yes. and, and continue continuing to um, expand that base, uh, mm-hmm. getting more and more uh, authors on, uh, more and more guests. Uh, and, and you and I have talked about actually dabbling and creating another show that is more, uh, what would, how would you say? Uh, politically pop, slanted, politically slanted, pop culture, trending, you mm-hmm. know, things that are trending, mm-hmm. uh, current, current trends and things like that. So we're toying with that idea because, you know, I'm bored and I don't have any, you know, I've got all this spare time on my hands that I, uh, need to fill it so that I'm not getting myself into trouble <laughs> because next week we actually, the AM station, uh, in there in Prestonsburg actually is going live with our local talk show. So next Wednesday is actually going to be a very interesting day. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got my talk show premiering that morning. I've got a three hour career day. I've got all my regular duties as director of operations. And then I come in and we do the two hour show Wednesday night. So that's going to be a fun day. Woohoo. Yes. Woo-hoo. Yeah, I know. It's great. Awesome. <laughs> uh, well, and we don't want to leave out our um, sister channels. Uh, yes, shows. I was going to. Yes, we've, oh, we've got. Well, uh, please go right ahead. No, no. I was going to say I wanted to make sure that we did talk about them. Right. Um, I'll, I'll talk about David and you talk about Carly. Okay. Um, David Haslam, uh, HMSI Publishing, uh, has has come under the, the Mystic Moon umbrella. He is hosting a show on Thursdays. Uh, you'll have to give me the time again because I because he's you. You and he share the same time zone, right? No, no, he's no. he's in your time zone. He's in. East, I thought he was central. Okay, so he's no. east coast. Okay, he's it's, eastern time. Michigan zone. is tricky. It's a split state. Yeah, I think. that's right. That's right. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. They don't observe daylight savings time. So okay. Yeah, it's it's it always screwed me up whenever I was booking my client Jody Ambrose, who is my sexpert there in Phoenix, uh, because when I would start talking time zones and I would try to start doing the math, I would always try to calculate her in um, in mountain time zones. She's like, no, she goes, we're not mountain, we're not central. She goes, we don't really observe daylight savings. We have kind of Phoenix kind of has its own little time thing. It never it doesn't change. It stays the same time year round. I'm like, <laughs> You're killing me, Jody. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. So. But um, but David has come on. He has uh, a program. Square One. Am I? Is that, is that or, correct? Or SQ One. I'm not sure. SQ One. Which... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Possibly. And he's yeah. SQ One. Square One. Mm-hmm. Squan. I don't know. I don't know exactly. <laughs> I, I, I don't haven't either. asked. I haven't asked him how to pronounce it. Uh, but he's come on. He's he's broadcasting, and uh, we're helping him uh, kind of fill out. Uh, this whole uh, podcasting kind of thing, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, he's he's having a lot of fun with it. He's enjoying it. But we want to send out uh, some some get well wishes. He had a a really scary uh, medical uh, issue that came up. Uh, I guess the first part of this week, and uh, he's recuperating. So we send our best to David uh, and yeah. his family there in Michigan, and and wish him a very speedy recovery. And then uh, one of the first to come under the umbrella was uh, was your acquaintance. Yes, uh, Carly McCracken with Crimson Cloak Publishing. That's her company. And I believe Lynn Nothing is is a partner there now. And she's on on Tuesdays. It, it kind of varies, but it's late morning or early afternoon central time. Mm-hmm. And she, and, she, uh, just, she interviews her authors and artists and, and all of those fun things. Yeah, and actually uh, she and I were uh, talking back and forth last night, and I think she's going to have me come on her show to talk about uh, publicity and promotion for self-published authors and authors who are using independent publishing houses like hers. So very good. Very good. Yeah, I think that'll be, that'll be very interesting. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
But uh, so that's kind of what's going on in our world here at Mystic Moon Cafe. We've got a great guest tonight, which we will come back and, and introduce. Uh, I think you have a song, though. Now, are we are we continuing the theme uh, with the or the same? Uh, well, of course artist? we are. Um, of well, no. <laughs> um, tonight it is. We'll start with uh, the Rigs walking on water. Okay. It's kind of a wooey song, and you know. Vesic is a necromancer, so there you are, right? Sounds good to me. So you are going to play that, and then we're going to get uh, our guest on the phone, and we'll come back in and do the intro. And I will let you do the intro, uh, since okay. you are since you are the number one fan. <laughs> Okie dokie. Because you can you can read it with more more pizzazz, more, maybe. Pizz- than oh, I could. Well, so, sure, so, that's it. I'll that's know it, what the but, hell I'm talking about. Is what you're saying. I'm just probably going to be drinking wine while you're reading the intro. So that's you all I'm saying. You take it easy I, if you haven't yeah. eaten except once today. I, 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 that's true. That's true. I will. I'm going to be very – I'm going to behave myself. I promise. Behave or I'm calling your mom. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The rig's walking on the water.
once again, that was The Rigs, Walking on the Water, or The Calling. And there were a whole lot of names associated with that song. Alrighty, tonight we have Eric R. Asher with us. Um, Eric is a former bookseller, cellist, and comic seller, seller currently living in the St. Louis, Missouri area. A lifelong enthusiast of books, music, toys, and games, he discovered a love for the written word after being dragged to the library by his parents at a young age. When he was not writing, you can usually find him reading, gaming, or buried beneath a small avalanche of transformers. Um, he's written the series, the Vesic series, um, which uh, about a necromancer and uh, golly, all kinds of different creatures, critters, people of le legend and myth. Um, also written the Steamborn Trilogy, a steampunk-themed uh, anthology, and new, coming out soon, I believe next month, is the Mason Dixon Monster Hunter. And let me grab the right mouse here and bring these guys on. Hello, Eric. Hello. Hello. Is Travis still with you, or was he boring you to tears? I think he might have left. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I was boring him to tears. We were talking about my many excursions driving the length and width of the state of Kansas and having driven through St. Louis many times. <laughs> now, careful. So Travis. we were. Yeah, two, we two were, Missourians here. Um, we can Missouri, you. I like. Missouri, I like. <laughs> it's the state of Kansas that I have. It's not, and it's not Kansas people. I didn't have a problem. I loved Kansas people, very friendly people. When you saw them, there weren't a lot of them on my trip. It was all road and tumbleweeds and desert. So we all feel that way about I, the drive. I would have, I would have longed. I, honestly, I would have longed to pitch up, pick up some kind of psychotic hitch hitchhiker just for interesting conversation. <laughs> yeah, but you're weird that way. Well, that's true. I am. I am just a little bit weird. So, that is fantastic. Uh, well, I was I was thanking Eric uh, before we we came live. You know, thanking him for coming back on the show. It's 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 so great to have him on, mm -hmm. talking about his work, talking about his life. And I know I told him I said Wendy is like this really really psychotic fan. He really needs to watch himself, especially since you are that close to him. That you have stalker potential. Wait a minute, <laughs> I was I wasn't supposed to tell her that part. <laughs> I'm a terrible stalker, and I bring my werewolves with me. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, she cannot sneak up on you with those. She really can't. So. No, I really can't. <laughs> Augie likes to say hello and then goose you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How are you doing tonight um, after that uh, conversation? I'm sure you're quite... Uh, <laughs> I'm not I'd say mildly right. worried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm good. I uh, good. I appreciate you guys inviting me on. It's mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like fun, and I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Um, well, where to begin? Travis, begin. Travis, begin. <laughs> you, you can tell she's used to dealing with dogs. Travis, begin. Travis, stop. Sit. Roll over. <laughs> And do it now, mister, or no right. Scooby Snack. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, now, w Wendy mentioned uh, kind of the plethora uh, of the, the, the book series that you have written. You've got the Vesic okay. series. Uh, you have the Steamborn trilogy. And I'm assuming there's probably, there, there may be more coming in, in, in that line. Uh, that you are introducing uh, a, a new novella series, uh, Mason Dixon Monster Hunter. So you're actually kind of yes. getting out. I mean, it's still kind of urban. It is. Sure. It's, uh, it's like a rural urban fantasy. <laughs> urban. It's urban. We'll, yes, we'll, like we'll coin our own word. It's urban. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what, I, I guess, coming from, you know, steampunk, urban adventure, and then kind of taking, I mean, obviously you've dealt with, with supernatural entities and the other stories, werewolves, things like that. What got you wanting to go into the, almost the cryptid kind of vein? Uh, it is very much the cryptid kind of vein, and uh, it's it's one of those things where a lot of the research for my Vesic series gets me digging into a lot of folklore and monsters that are inside of the Missouri area, but I'm also learning a lot of, about folklore monsters that don't really fit into a urban urban fantasy too well. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, urban urban fantasy. That's mm-hmm. that, that's good. Let's not use that again. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it's just it, it turned up a lot of things, and then I started doing more research on cryptids, and I was really interested in them, and they were a lot of fun to read about. And I didn't really think about doing anything with them. Uh, and then at Dragon Con last year, I was talking to John Hartness, who is the owner of Falstaff Books, and he asked me if I'd be interested in participating in this project that is set in his Bubba the, Bubba the Monster Hunter world, <laughs> okay. except kind of like having another monster hunter in a different part of the country, i.e. Missouri, that would be participating in that same world. And I had to think about it for about two seconds and said yes, and we'll see if I regret that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So you, you've introduced this this new character, Mason Dixon, which I love the name, by the way. <laughs> is is, is he is he based on any one particular individual, uh, or is he kind of this uh, composite of of cryptozoologists and monster hunters? He is. Honestly, a composite of a lot of Missouri hunters that I've known. Um, and just, I really in- enjoy, like, sarcastic people. And I really enjoy people that love animals. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of mashed up into all of that. And it's, uh, I, I kind of like to spin it as a mashup of Fantastic Beasts and Grimm. All kind of <laughs> pushed up in the okay. Big nice. straight ball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's very cool. Now, I, I want to read kind of the excerpt that, that Wendy has taken from your, your official uh, information. And th- this is how you kind of describe this new series. Uh, Something waits in the rural hills of Missouri, terrorizing a small town and leaving a path of destruction. The secrecy of the endangered cryptid population is threatened, capturing the attentions of reality show host Mason Dixon, cryptid hunter and conservationist. When the beasts of folklore stray too close to humanity, Mason has no choice but to track them down while he does all he can to protect the cryptids. Mason knows sometimes it's humanity that needs protecting. So, I'm familiar with a lot of, of cryptids, uh, Mothman, Dogman, Sasquatch, uh, those types of things. What yeah. is the what is the um, uh, kind of the the state cryptid for Missouri? What what do, what does what does Missouri have that is going to kind of be the the tentpole cryptid for this series of novellas? Uh, not necessarily the tent pull for this series. Well, kind of, yeah, actually, it does appear in there. Uh, but kind of the most uh, well-known cryptid from Missouri is probably Momo, okay. which is short for the Missouri monster. It, he's um, very Sasquatch-like, but his story's a little bit darker, a little bit more kills family pets ish. <laughs> okay. Which is, Awful, and I'm not necessarily yes. just using him completely in the tradition of the folk tales, but yeah, he he definitely makes an appearance. But uh, th- there's a lot of more obscure uh, folklore monsters and cryptids that I really enjoy. There's one with this. You when you start digging down, there's a lot of really weird names, and one of my favorites is this huge thing called a hinge-tailed Bing buffer, and it's just like the corniest <laughs> name. Mm-hmm. And then you find out it can, like, hurl bowling ball-sized stones at, like, mock speed. And then, then it's like, oh, well, it's kind of terrifying, too. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the first one written and at the, at you know, the editors and going through that process, or? It is indeed. And actually, the second one, uh, this is a novella series. So each one's going to be eh, in like the 30 to 35,000 word range, mm-hmm. which is about a third of the length of a full length book. And uh, what we're doing is four different authors are writing in this series, and we're each going to do four novellas. And then at the end of the year, we're going to combine them all into a big paperback, like collected edition. Oh, so nice. it'll kind of form a cohesive story. Should be a lot of fun. Sounds well, that's like very that cool. It's a, yeah, it's a very interesting idea. We'll see if it's a bad one or not. Pretty. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say. I didn't notice. I didn't say it was a good idea. I yeah. it was idea. <laughs> no, I, I'm excited about it. I, I have a lot of friends that are publishing more novellas right now than anything else, and they they're doing well with it. So we shall see. 
Now, um, I have to ask about a panel you were on that included the names that, you know, we all know and love. Like Jim Butcher, Patricia, Who? you know him. You know, what's his name? <laughs> Old Dresden. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Patty, Patty Briggs, and yes. um, I think there were yes. a few others. Actually, John Hartness was on that panel with me, too. Oh. So that was, uh, and uh, Tiffany Trent and Ted Nifo. And okay. Ted, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. <laughs> yeah, they're, it, it was amazing because I I love all of their work. And mm-hmm. Patty is hands down one of my favorite authors ever. Yes. So, yeah, that was that was a really neat experience. Did you go all fanboy or was it OK? Did you do all right? So thankfully, <laughs> this was like the fourth time, I fifth time. I, I met Patty a few times before that. Mm-hmm. So, yes. I fanboyed, but I kept it in check. <laughs> <laughs> Not scary stalkerish like across the state from me, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, the, uh, the the first time I met Jim was actually I was on a panel with Jim the year before, mm-hmm. and I will never forget the first thing I said to the man was, "I like your books." <laughs> I was like, ooh, smooth, nice. <laughs> I've seen him in different. Uh, interviews or, or heard him and things and it seems like he gets a little tongue tied as well so I'm sure you guys were fine <laughs> oh yeah it was fun yeah. <laughs> it, it's always fun listening to Jim I'll bet so so alright Vesic where did you get the thought or idea for necromancers well this is going to be a really short answer but it's true <laughs> I uh I had a nightmare, it, like super vivid, ridiculous, just, and that was book one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, all right. Yeah, yeah it, it kind of it kind of spawned a short story that I wrote like the day after I had the nightmare, and then uh, that short story kind of kept growing, and then I had a novel. Mm-hmm. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> good planning on my part. Very excellent planning, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I had to think, um, I, I wanted to ask, uh, were you a, a Kim Harrison, The Hollows fan as well? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, are are the fairies in any way related to Jenks? Because I keep expecting them to holler out something like, Jenks little red bikini or whatever, you know, Jenks was always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, they're, they're really not, so... Mm-hmm. Jinx. Uh, Jinx couldn't get big. Right, right. right. Except for that one time that he did when they used but the that potion That was a whole on spell it, thing, right? Yeah. Which was hilarious. Yes, it was. <laughs> but, uh, and that may have influenced the fact that I have my fairies get big and small, and I, I don't know. I hadn't really thought that deeply into it, but that's an interesting <laughs> thought. Um, because you know, we really are influenced by all the books we read. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, you know, f- fairies in, in the hollows were like, they're just evil. You know, they're now Jinx and the Pixies and everybody, they're the fine, Pixies, but right, man. Right, yep. What's uh, his name? Trent. Was it Trent? No, he was yeah, an elf. Yeah. He was an elf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still well, fae. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. Let me see. But. Yeah, I love I love Foster. Foster's just oh, he's Foster's nice. a lot of fun to write. <laughs> I'll bet so, <laughs> with a great sense of, sense of justice. That I like that about your series, where you're they're not into all the self recrimination for standing up for themselves or somebody else. And oh, I killed somebody. Oh no, I'm terrible. He's like, screw it. You did this. You're going down, Mister. And, you know, I, I get some interesting feedback about that. Some people are like, oh, well, all your characters are sociopaths. I'm like, well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> all my good friends but, are, too, so there. Yes, that's true. It's, it's like the same reason I had Nixie and Undine become Damien's girlfriend. Spoiler, if no one's read book two yet. Um, <laughs> and it's like these characters that have grown up and have these powers and they so far outside of normal things that we know it's like they're not really going to have a normal view on death and killing i mean it's going to be it's going to be different from them they're going to respond differently to it right right it's more justice than 
letting it happen to you, I guess. I don't know. Right. <laughs> Uh, where did you find Kuthis? And would you tell us what they are a little bit and, and how they come into the story? So Kuthis, um, I came across when I was researching uh, a lot of Celtic mythology. Mm-hmm. Wait, did I get that wrong? Hold on, let me check my book. <laughs> it's the Scottish Celts. Gaelic, the Gaelics. Yeah! <laughs> or at least that's All right, was. so... I came across them. It was actually in Visions and Beliefs in the West of Ireland by Lady Gregory. Oh, okay. Yes. So they they are interesting. And obviously I did not exactly stick straight to the legends with them. <laughs> um, they're much darker. They're uh, Irish wolfhounds that are pretty much harbingers of death. Right, right. And, and, and green. I mean, they are more like really friendly house pets. So, well, But that's how we want them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Having several of those myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, but, no, the, their names are Bubbles and Peanuts, so there you go. Okay, so fun random fact. Peanut mm-hmm. was the name of my first gerbil. Okay. <laughs> so that's nice. where I came from. Very nice, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I had what and who are the fairies and what is socio sanation, a title or an incantation or both? So that is an incantation. Okay. Um, all of the incantations well i shouldn't say all of them some of them are wildly just made up but all (laughs) most of the incantations are rooted in latin Mm -hmm. and then i came up with a pattern of other latin words or suffixes that kind of either designate the strength of the spell or the target of the spell okay so socius is basically ally and oh, okay. sanation is a uh, a misspelling of uh, healing. Okay, nice. And it sounds much cooler when my audiobook narrator says it, though, because he actually speaks Latin, so he gets all oh, the words. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who who was the narrator? Oh, uh, that was William DeFries. Okay. Now and William, I'll... he's he's won a slew of awards. It's ridiculous. But my favorite random fact about William is he is actually the original voice of Bob the Builder. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so all that hyper-violent, terrible language, questionable morals, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. Bob the Builder. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I, perfect. It fits perfectly. <laughs> um, let me see. Oh, this was one question. Is Kara's husband also Foster's father, or is there somebody else? Uh, or is that a spoiler? If it's a spoiler, you don't that, have to tell yeah, me. Yeah, I don't think I can approach that one without some fairly <laughs> hefty spoilers. <laughs> well, I, you know, yeah, I, I had to tap dance around a lot of my questions so as not to give spoilers, but... Everybody needs to read it. I'm, I'm trying to invite questions and interest. <laughs> she, she's enticing them. She yes. she's the Pied Piper. She is she she she's the creepy person driving around the van in the bookmobile trying to get people to come in and read. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is, that is a that is a healthy activity. I I think so. Uh-huh. I think so. Now. I, I'm sorry, Wendy. I just I told you what I, I was going to be tonight. I'm, oh, I'm, I, I am like brain dead. <laughs> this this day this, this is, I'm working on. This is 15 and a half hours. I'm going on 16 hours of straight work. Mm-hmm. So oh. this is this is the kind of day that it's been. That's too much now, work. I know that's what I keep saying, but nobody listens to me. Way, way, uh, way. I don't even I don't even listen to myself. Oh, <laughs> shut up! Uh, <laughs> I'm now, telling Ma Walton. <laughs> yeah. You don't know exactly how how close to being right you are when you say that. <laughs> oh, all right, sorry. 
Travis yeah, is know. from Virginia, but I got it mixed up with West Virginia in the beginning, so I yeah. figured he came from Walton's Mountain, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, Walton's mm-hmm. Mountain is in Virginia, yes. Mm-hmm. It was said in, <laughs> yes, I know. And actually, drive by that mountain uh, on many occasions, driving to Richmond and Charlottesville, Virginia. You actually drive by the mountain that that was based on. Oh, neat. Been by it okay. many times. Yeah, been by it many times. Mm-hmm. So... Um, now, in, in the series, the, the the main protagonist is is called a necromancer. Now, how do you how do you define necromancer? Uh, so Damien's a little odd. As you get past the first couple books, he he doesn't really adhere strictly to the. Uh, Traditional necromancer, which I'm totally not answering your question. I'll get back to your question. But, <laughs> well, thank you for acknowledging that you weren't. <laughs> so, so a, a lot of I, I I got a lot of interesting messages after the first book because people were like, "Well, he's not really a necromancer; he's more of a wizard." And I was like, "Yeah, maybe there's a reason for that." Mm-hmm. And they're like, "No, I'm pretty sure you're just a terrible writer." I was like, "Well, thank you." What? <laughs> <laughs> but but as we come to find out fairly quickly, Damien comes from a lineage that gives him a lot of powers that maybe a normal necromancer would not have or would not have access to or the ability to access them, which you kind of get hints of it in the first couple books. And then it really opens up in the later books, mm-hmm. which is all I'm going to say about that, because spoilers. <laughs> and uh, but to get back to the original question, uh, necromancer, in my view, would be someone that uses inherently black magic to either reanimate the dead or communicate with the dead. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, f- would that then would the the motivation or the purpose for that vary based on? The type of necromancer. I mean, are there good necromancers, bad necromancers? In in my world, there are a lot of times. Necromancers are always the bad guy, which I think might be why I wanted to do some necromancer type characters that weren't the bad guy. Okay, uh, it's or a it's a fun line, twist. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's definitely a few things that happen that they're walking the line or going <laughs> over it gratuitously. <laughs> But hopefully, you know, reining it back in well enough. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Zola is a is a conundrum there, like that. <laughs> I love Zola. I do too. She's one of my favorites. I figure she's a she's kind of like Minerva from Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and her hairstyle with the uh, Magris Neto, is that how you say that? Mm-hmm. Yes. With that in her hair would be a lot like Mark. Elizabeth Taylor in Cleopatra. Hmm. I have to Google that now. <laughs> oh, okay. I watched it. It was on <laughs> Turner Classic Movies yesterday, and I went, hey, you know what? <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, okay, the, the Faye deadbolt lock. Is there a story behind <laughs> that, or are we ever going to hear it? I'm or? so <laughs> impressed with that question. Uh, yes, there's definitely a story associated with that. Okay, and that's all I'm going to get? Ah, uh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't decided if I'm going to include it in the main uh, in the main books or if I'm actually going to do a novella spinoff mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's actually several novellas that I'd like to do that give you more background on the characters that Damien himself doesn't necessarily know. And because he doesn't really know it, I don't like to include it in the main continuity. Okay. Uh, because then it would require like a really boring info dump of them telling stories around the. Uh, no, don't want to do that. But, okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I'd really like to do some spinoffs that really get into some of the side characters more. Sure, sure. Uh, there are so <laughs> many characters. My goodness. <laughs> Yeah, and I've had a lot of people that are like, can't you just write up a character index for us? And I think I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start including a, a, like a index of characters in the front or back of each book. Yeah, I started keeping a list after a while because we refer back to one and I go, oh shoot, which one was that? <laughs> but I'm oh, old and have terrible. a spot in memory. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's, that's good inspiration that I probably need to do that. Okay. Tell us about your 1837 Allen and Thurber Pepperbox pistol that Bessick is so fond of and the modifications that the that Foster and family did to upgrade and update it. So that was like a totally selfish inclusion because <laughs> I am really fond of that gun mm-hmm. like in real life. It's just really neat. It has a neat history. It does. It's, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, how is he going to use that in a practical fashion in modern times? It's like, is, is, is somebody going to be manufacturing pen fire ammunition for him? Probably not. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or he'd have to do his own, and that would still be a pain. <laughs> yeah, and and I do know a lot of people that reload their own ammo, and that's mm-hmm. that's not the kind of thing that they would even want to try. Right. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. but that, a, a lot of uh, a lot of weapons from that time period I, I find very interesting, um, which is kind of I was looking for. Weapons that were used or made their way into the American Civil War. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, as you know, there's a lot of history that's tied behind the books. Like a lot of the battle, oh, well, yeah. all the battlefields and the forts and everything that they visit in the books are real world locations. Uh, have you visited all of those and uh, kind of scoped them out so you could give a, an accurate type description and things? I have. And it's <laughs> funny story. <laughs> the uh, the second book when they visit uh, Stones River Battlefield mm-hmm. uh, down by Murfreesboro, that I wrote the scene. I was super happy with the scene. My editor loved the scene, and then I visited the battlefield, Uh-oh. and I was like, "Well, <laughs> that's oh, gotta start see. over." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we really had to pull it apart. So. Uh, you can. I, I really like the idea that you can go to this place and you can retrace this character's steps, and it, mm-hmm. it's feasible. So right. that that definitely took some reworking, because the way the way I originally wrote it, just like using a Google Maps overhead view, oh. it was like, oh, well, that five minute trek actually probably would have taken an hour and forty five minutes. That's <laughs> the yeah. way I walk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And definitely not accessible by vehicle or at least not a car. Definitely not a car. You could theoretically drive a car up in there, but mm-hmm. they wouldn't be very happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Park and rangers kind of frown on that sort of thing. <laughs> quite often, yep, yep. They ask you to leave and stuff. And <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's hard to decide. When I visit those places, there's oftentimes a lot of uh, a lot of museums and old houses and stuff around the battlefields, and mm-hmm. it's it, it can be hard to decide what's going to get used and what's not, and it's, it's what's too much and what's not enough. And yeah, I, exactly. I because if you, you add in too many of those little details, you can really bog down the story. <clears throat> really want to find that balance. <laughs> But for those of us that do get pretty far, in, you know, immersed in it, it just kind of it becomes a, a imagination visual for us. It, it's kind of cool too. Thank you. No, sure. <laughs> um, ah, okay. Uh, without giving away too much of the story, um, would you tell us about Gwynap Nud? Is that how you say his last name? Uh. And his plots. Depending um, on who reads it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get too bent out of shape about things when people are like, that's not how I pronounce it. I was like, okay. No, okay. Well, I didn't know if it was nude or nud, but you keep talking about his balls, it's, so I figured I could that ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's Foster. That is not me. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, yeah, so he's, he's an interesting... Uh, in a lot of the old tales, he is like a Lord of the Dead. Mm-hmm. So I thought he would be a perfect complement to the stories. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So there's a little bit of bending of the stories, kind of turning him into a, a king of the Fae. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a lot of uh, 
him and Hearn both, there's a lot that, that I pulled out of the old fairy tales and the uh, folk tales mm-hmm. that I, I try to reuse with their characters. Oh, sure, like the wild hunt and uh, yep. how much how much of a threat is Hearn to him to right. win? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. All interesting questions that you have to read the books to find out, Nina. <laughs> yes, because they're fascinating. <laughs> yes. I'm totally unbiased. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always enjoyed all the old mythologies and, and things anyway, so I, I really enjoyed this the line we go with here. Well, speaking of mythology-driven stories, have you read uh, Iron Druid? By oh, Kevin gosh, Hearn? yes. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, that's mm-hmm. so well done. I, I, I have those. to agree, Yeah. <laughs> I read that and I was like, why didn't I think of making the dogs talk? That's brilliant. <laughs> well, you still could. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> well, oh, but Lord. wait. Wait, the dogs Even already I... talk because they're werewolves. <laughs> well, okay, those dogs technically yeah, talk. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> I think it's a though. It's like that, that'd, be a little, that'd be a little hard to make up. <laughs> well, yeah, somehow mind to mind. Maybe, maybe Sam can come up with something. <laughs> well now that that brings up an interesting topic eric what do you read for your own pleasure uh patricia briggs mm-hmm. <laughs> mercy thompson and the uh alpha and omega series. literally everything by patricia briggs uh-huh yep so, uh, raven <laughs> shadow too. raven strike masks ever whatever it is i will mm-hmm. read it mm-hmm. because i love it um one of my one of my favorite books, one of my favorite dragon books of mm-hmm. late. Uh, I would just just thought of the dragon books because I thought of Dragon Bones and Dragon's Blood by uh, Patricia Briggs. But one of the other urban fantasy authors that we all know and love is uh, Carrie Vaughn, and she just released the sequel to Voices of Dragons, oh. and the new one is called Refuge of Dragons. Go I actually it. hadn't heard of her. Go, oh, you, does that mean you have not read the Kitty series? I have not read the Kitty series. <laughs> so Kitty is about a werewolf named Kitty. Oh my gosh. It's phenomenal. The first book is called Kitty in the Midnight Hour. I think that's the first book. I have a terrible memory about these things sometimes. So confirm that before you buy it, but okay, go buy yeah. it. It's amazing. But if you like dragon stories, you mm-hmm. have to pick up her Voices of Dragons and her uh, Refuge of Dragons. Well, yeah, because you know, they're phenomenal. Sure, I've liked the dragon story since way back in Anne McCaffrey's early days. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> um, yes. Carrie, uh, I, I've only met Carrie once, but when I met her, again playing it really cool, totally not a fanboy. <laughs> I was basically just like, do you know how good Voices of Dragons is? So, like, this is one of my favorite books. I mean, it's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But, yeah. So a couple years later, she has the sequel out. I am very happy. I'm writing these down. <laughs> <laughs> My memory goes kaput as well, quite often. Just ask Travis. I'm sorry. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? We're all in the same boat. Where am I? <laughs> Yeah, okay. I, always, I always feel bad when somebody asks me something about the books, and I'm like, ah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, do you wait remember minute, more? Wait a minute, I, I gotta look that up. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I have. Uh, there's a there's a company out there. Uh, Carol Malcolm runs it, and it's called Novel Guidance for Authors. And she she writes these. She'll actually take your book and make a huge series bible out of it. So you've got your character references, you've got your chapter references. All your subplots organized, and it's such a lifesaver. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> like, after you get so many books in a series, it's like, uh, what was that guy's name? <laughs> right, right, yeah. Oh, well, that was. Oh no, that was a, that was that other series. Wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Too funny. <laughs> any other any other fun ones you like? Um. So one of my favorite. One of my favorite books of all time is uh, Black Sun Rising by C.S. Friedman. And that is more of a high fantasy, epic fantasy mm-hmm. book. But the trilogy is amazing. It's called the Cold Fire Trilogy. It is one of the best. 
I think I've got that on my Kindle waiting to be read, along with, you know, a couple hundred others. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you definitely need to read that one. Um, wow, I'm totally dropping a blank. Let me bring my Kindle up here real quick. Hold on. <laughs> sure. Well, sure. <laughs> this is so terrible. <laughs> it is what it is. We get so much information in our heads that it starts getting lost in the shuffle. It's in oh, there. Right. It's just accessing it. <laughs> right? <laughs> mm-hmm. I actually read a lot of nonfiction too, just for research, but mm -hmm. that's not as exciting. <laughs> well, Travis makes me read a lot of the nonfiction things about the UFOs <laughs> so, and and monsters. This is true. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. I do. Mm -hmm. I just wow. I I'm looking at these books and I'm like, how did I forget that? Um, <laughs> like anything by Tad Williams, I love him. Okay. Uh oh. Victoria Schwab, E. E. Schwab. Are you familiar with her at all? I I know the name, but I would. <laughs> I'm like you. I'd have to check my Kindle. <laughs> like any anything she does, it's mm -hmm. uh, just pick it up. It's so good. It is so good. Like and there's, well, Kathy Clamp, Cat uh -huh. Cat Adams. When yeah, they yeah. Uh, D. B. Jackson. Mm -hmm. You familiar with D. B. Jackson? Yes, yes, I am. So Which books were they? I, I know the I know the author's name, so I know I've read it. <laughs> so his his, uh, his my favorite series that he's done. Uh, his D B Jackson is a pen name. His full name is David B Coe, who he and he also publishes books under that name. Okay. Uh, but D B Jackson wrote the Thief Taker series, and what's really neat about the Thief Taker series is it's an urban fantasy, but it's set during the Revolutionary War. Oh wow! Okay, very different. Yeah, so you've got you've got all this history, but it's set, you know, hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. Really neat. Uh, Neil Gaiman, of course. I don't care what it is; I will read it. Okay. I love him. Uh, <laughs> Harry Connolly. Did you read Child of Fire? It's in. It's on my kit. It's on my e-reader. So good. Mm -hmm. So good. Jim Butcher, of course, obviously. We already talked about that. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mary Mancusi. She writes a dragon series that I really enjoyed. The first book was Scorched. Okay. That was a lot of fun. I don't think I've read her or even got her on the e-reader. <laughs> uh, definitely. Definitely check that one out. Mm -hmm. Very cool. <laughs> I could do this all day. Okay. So, okay. what's next? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was interested in the dedication in, in book two. <laughs> uh, uh -oh. Which wolves one was that? <laughs> uh, oh, Wolves of Wolves and the River of Stone. It's dedicated to bacon. <laughs> oh, yes. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a bacon problem. Well, yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, me though. I've, I've got the dogs to help me with that problem. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they help me out. Here, yeah, Mom, let was, me take care of that for you. <laughs> that was like that was just one of those years where I had eaten a lot of weird bacon dishes. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's when bacon like had its heyday, and there was like bacon cookbooks coming out, and oh yeah, all kinds of terrible things. <laughs> terrible, I mean, fantastic. Uh, right, so yeah, right, cool. yeah. <laughs> I flashed a Deadpool for a moment. I it just seemed like a Deadpool <laughs> moment. <laughs> oh yeah. And by Deadpool terrible, I meant fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I do love Deadpool. Mhm. Mm I'm so happy to see him like come into the mainstream. Oh, me too. And I wasn't even gonna really. I didn't have any desire to see it at first, and then a friend of mine's son, teenage son, goes, "Oh, Wendy, you gotta watch this. It's just <laughs> oh my god." So I watched it, and I watch it all the time now. <laughs> I. I'm the same way. I I bought it. I've let my my I watched it. Then me and my kids have watched it, mm -hmm. and my my you know my 14 year old son and my 13 year old daughter absolutely <laughs> love Deadpool. Mm -hmm. I know I'm a bad father, but no, you're uh, not. No, you know, letting 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 them watch Deadpool. Uh, there's so there's a, some language and some violence and language. some sex. Oh, <laughs> well. Just a little bit of violence, but yeah, but, but you know, my and 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 Eric. And Eric may understand this. I mean, my kids are really big into uh, the YouTube gaming channels and gamers, and they love Game Grumps. 
<laughs> uh, I don't and know the language those two guys use is worse than what Deadpool says. <laughs> yeah, that would be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron and I forget the other guy's name, I, and, but it's like, I mean, I, I walk into a room and it's, I'm like, I just walk into a frat house? What the hell? <laughs> that's the, man, and that's, I tell you that like all online gaming has gone that way. It's anytime you get into a match, it's like, oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sparring with vulgarity. I mean, it's this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, there's a little screen diverged. flash. I wasn't sure where it was coming from. I still don't yeah. know. <laughs> you still, you still don't know. <laughs> I still don't know, but apparently we've still got connection and all, so it's all good. I can still hear you. <laughs> okay, good. I can still hear you. Yep. And I, yep, I can hear you as we're well. We're self-modulating, we so. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Don't even go I've, there. I, uh, <laughs> oh, you are tired. I am. I <laughs> no, it has. I mean, you know. Oh, um, oh. Now, um, you you mentioned we we were talking earlier about some of the um, the national battlefields and and the places that you incorporate being real. There's a place that you mentioned in one of the books, Catfish Kettle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it real? It is real. Good place to eat. It is fantastic, <laughs> as a matter of fact. And I've actually had several readers message me that they have gone there, and most of them loved it. One of them was like, "They literally only have fish." I'm like, well, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> With that name, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like fried fish and hush puppies, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, we're talking, like, this place has the old uh, vinyl tablecloths with the fuzzy stuff on the bottom. I mean, uh-huh. it's, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, Love perfect. It. It, it reminds me of going down as, as a little girl with my grandma and all of her family down to uh, Knoll, Missouri. And, yeah. And Pineville and around there. That's where she was from originally. And and going to the river and having the big fish fries and all of the, the cast iron skillet cooked potatoes and all oh. the family, all around, and all the humidity, of course. But um, that good times, really good memories. And the ticks, and the mm-hmm. ticks, <laughs> the ticks. No, 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 no ticks. No, <laughs> no. I just put a little top spot on. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, growing up, my dad was all about the sulfur powder. It's like, oh, oh yeah, going outside, douse yourself in sulfur powder. <laughs> There's mm-hmm. enough sulfur in that water to keep the ticks off of you. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, I don't remember having any. Um, I don't remember us having a real problem. But we stayed real close in the river. It stayed out of the brush and stuff. So it was. Oh uh, yeah, that always yeah. helps. Yep. Yeah. Um, so speaking yes. of food things, yes, and you being where you are, have you <laughs> ever been to RJ's Barbecue in? Kansas City. I have not been to RJ's. It's in Northtown, isn't it? You should go to RJ's. It's okay. so good. And they misspell it. They actually spell it Bob BQ. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so good. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> well, you know, um, good old uh, Arthur Bryant, he might have had a little objection, but uh, hey, I think he's dead now, so it really doesn't matter, does it? It Ooh, probably it could. Bessick could come over and, and uh, feed him some energy. <laughs> that sounds like a really bad thing to do. We could we could have a cook off with the dead people. <laughs> oh Lord. Oh I my could goodness. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> um Okay, um in in Saint Charles old downtown is there a, a shop like the double d Death there Store? is there yep. is i mean it's not like the, the building is there okay. you know the the shop's different all the time if your stuff goes in there it closes it reopens yeah it, yeah yeah as, it's as all happens the, in those old squares yeah mm-hmm. and the the fudge shop is not called that but there is a fudge shop there um, did you read my notes <laughs> Oh, were you, you going to ask about I, I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> no, that's okay. It. No, that's funny. I just thought, well, What's you, the you, next brought, you got that right off that same line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all, um, it is all there. Mm-hmm. 
It is all there. Now, one thing, uh, Mm -hmm. one thing from book two that isn't exactly as it's done in the book was uh, the bridge where they bury Lewis Hood. That's Mm -hmm. a little bit further away than I realized. I kind of wrote that scene, and then I was like, "Uh, "Do I really want to fix that?" Uh, Artistic license there, right? (laughs) Yeah, but it actually worked out okay because there used to be a bridge there that they demolished. So mm-hmm. it's like, oh, well, that must be from before that bridge was torn down. So it was fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling yeah. you all my dark secrets Perfect. now. Good Lord. Oh, that's what it is. We've, we've got more. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was I was checking the radar because we had some uh, some pop ups about an hour and a half or so. Well, actually, it was actually closer to six o'clock. And uh, oh, it you was have a nasty tornado storm. Um. We're under tornado watch, but we're getting a little... The red's kind of moving this direction a little bit. Should be okay. That's always fun. Always fun. All the doggies will be back down uh, here. (laughs) That means we're probably going to get a hit here in a few hours. There's one closer to you than me, yeah. Yep. It's a big old cell. (laughs) Oh, man. Yep. Mm -hmm. Looks like it'll be here in about three hours. Woohoo! They're slow moving and... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fun times. Yeah, right? Okay, so yeah. let's leave that topic of conversation out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, well, hey there. Can can Damien pull energy from the lightning as well as the ley lines? I'm pretty sure he'd just get fried. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> he'd knock himself out for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> Great big werewolf named Hugh is good. Well, okay, I I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce Hugh's real name, but uh, have have you listened to the audiobooks at all? I have not. Okay, so <laughs> we took Hugh's full name, and one of my oh crud, I'm totally going to get the tribe wrong now. <laughs> uh, one one of my readers is uh. Rudd. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can find this real quick. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to say Hana Hokayo Yoho. Hana Kayo Yoho. You, you would think. Are you trying to say Hanukkah? Are you trying to say Hanukkah? No, I'm trying to say Hugh's real <laughs> Indian name. It's like 20 characters long. <laughs> well, of course it is. Mm-hmm. And somebody loses a bet about how to spell it and has to, you know, take on an expense. <laughs> What's the expense? It, uh, I believe it was cleaning up a, a supernatural fight area so that the normal people, the commons, didn't find it. Ah, uh, okay. Uh huh. <clears throat> fun, fun times, fun times. Oh yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm just a terrible person, and I don't remember which tribe, but uh, she took it to a powwow and talked to some of her elders, and they actually gave us the correct pronunciation for the audiobook narrator so that we could get it right. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yes. and it, it, I'm so glad that they did because we would have mangled it. Oh, man. <laughs> I figured that was an easily mangled, yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that that name uh, that is actually from the legend of the high-backed wolf. That is a uh, old Native American story, which was I thought was pretty cool. Do you know it? Would you like to tell us? No, no, I'm not going to ruin that. <laughs> uh, but if you Google, uh, hold on, let me make sure I tell you the right thing. Okay. I believe it's a Cheyenne legend. Uh... (laughs) Uh, I don't have it bookmarked. Yeah. So, anyhow. Uh, Message me later or whatever. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'd love to read it. Well, it could be another offshoot. (laughs) Yeah, there's some amazing... There's some amazing stories, and it's really interesting. Some of the uh, some of the stories that Native Americans would share with uh, like white settlers and stuff would actually be completely made up um, because they did not want them. They 
The reasoning is not completely unknown, but it's believed that some of the tribes didn't want like their most sacred stories to be shared with uh, outsiders. Outsiders, okay, sure. I can understand that. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Indeed. <laughs> okay. Anyhow. What's yes, next? anyhow, meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, would you like to tell us uh, what, who Happy is? Um, we know he's more than just a guardian panda bear. <laughs> Giant panda bear. <laughs> How, have you, have you gotten through all the books? Yes, I have. Um, I was, okay. I went back to reread, but I, and I only got about mm, three quarters of the way through the second one. So, Shiawase is Happy's other form, mm-hmm. and he is a long, uh, if you have not read up through book five, turn your ears off. <laughs> <laughs> he is a samurai, mm-hmm. the, he's basically a ghost samurai that has taken on the form of a panda, and while we have not fully explained yet why some ghosts can take on different forms, we will be getting to that eventually. There is probably a reason for it. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Probably, but we're not telling yet, so there. <laughs> hey, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, that, this this is fun. We're having fun. <laughs> we're going to we hint always. at something. We're going to hint at something, and then, but we're really not going to tell you. You have to read the books. We're, exactly, but we always have fun. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like those webinars that you sign up for for free, and they're like, we're going to tell you the secret of blah, blah, blah. And then you go to the webinar, and they're like, now give us $500 so right. we can tell and you. It will take right. right. Six payments of nine ninety nine ninety nine. dollars All I want is two ninety nine. That's pretty reasonable. <laughs> Ooh, yes, definitely. <laughs> oh, wait. Actually, the box set's on sale for $0.99 cents right now, so hey. <laughs> yes, it is. And... Is the uh, if you sign up for the email or your newsletter um, deal still going as well? It is. So you can get uh, oh, I don't remember which one's still going. So I don't <laughs> want to say that. But yes, there's something where you get free stories if you sign up. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but hey, we're not going to tell you how or where. <laughs> Uh, if oh. you go to if you go to my website, there is a sign up screen. Mm-hmm. Just uh, ericrasher dot com. Yep. So yes. I, I have a question for you. Uh, right. I've worked with a lot of a lot of authors, and one of the things that always fascinates me, Eric, is is what type of mental state they get in when they when they're writing their their stories. So for you, where do you go mentally to start writing? About Vesic. Mm, that's a good question. I don't he's, know. He's not going to answer. <laughs> uh, it's not uncommon to have a drink, and mm-hmm. I, I have a lot of soundtracks that I will put on to write a scene that has a certain timbre or emotion to it. Okay. Um. And other than that, a lot of times just going and visiting St. Charles and kind of hanging out there to get the feel of that old city again, Mm -hmm. uh, that really helps a lot. So, yeah, usually it's just slap the headphones on and start writing, though. I mean, (laughs) honestly. What, um... I I guess... I, I've used this. I've kind of told this story several times. My, both my children are, are very artistic. Of course, every parent says that. But you know, my my son, my son leans more towards uh, visual art. So he's much more into drawing. He creates his own comic strips. He and his friends create their own uh, comic that they're constantly adding to every day. They're adding characters, adding plots, adding stories. Oh, cool! Build, building it together as they go. My daughter loves to write, and she has been writing for about six years. She's um, She's getting ready to turn 13. She'll be 13 in July. She started writing back in 2010, 2011. And for her, she's she and an, an amazing grasp of the English language. And she's very articulate. She's very imaginative. But I remember when she first started writing, 
as I mentioned, I, I, I've worked with authors. I've helped them pub, uh, do the publicity, do the promotions, do marketing and PR and that sort of thing. So I've worked with, with a lot of, of self-published and emerging authors. And several years ago, when my daughter did decide she wanted to start writing, it was so funny. I was keeping them during the summer while their mom was teaching uh, summer sessions at the college where she teaches. And, and my daughter would get up in the morning and she would sit down and she would start writing and she would work on the laptop and she would just, you know, click away, hammer away at the keypad. And then she would get up and she would decide she was going to take a break. And maybe she and her brother were going to play video games. or Maybe she was going to, to play with her toys, or whatever. And she would set an alarm. She would set a timer and she would give herself 30 minutes or an hour or whatever. <laughs> and then when that alarm went off, she would be right back in front of the computer and she would be writing again. And she still does it very much that way to that day. Very, I told her, I said, I wish to God that every author I worked with had that type of discipline in themselves mm -hmm. that they would sit down and write until they reached a point where they needed a break, take the break, and they would come back. What type of writing process, but not just necessarily where are you going mentally, but what's the writing process like for you as an author? So basically your daughter's a big fan of the Pomodoro method. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you know, I've tried sprints before and, Sprints work well for me if I don't have a lot of time. So mm -hmm. if it's like I'm going to have an hour and a half in the morning and then my day job is going to completely annihilate the rest of my day, that works really well. Um, but my ideal scenario is to write first thing in the morning and just keep at it for mm, two to three hours. And my, my word count really increases if I can write in that kind of block. Because I think my brain just kind of engages with the story more. And uh, that third hour, I'll usually knock out, you know, 2,000 to 2,500 words. Whereas the hours before it, the first hour might only be 500. Second hour might only be 1,000. And it just kind of curves up in that arc. But then I definitely hit a ceiling where it's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm done. <laughs> and I, I have to get away from it. And I will I will sometimes get away from it for a couple hours or half a day, and then I'll try to write a little bit more in the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, usually my usually my more intoxicated writing is in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely not first thing in the morning. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> uh congratulations on Rattle the Bones, the sixth sixth book in the series. Uh being up for the Once Upon a Book convention, up, up for two awards, right? Yes, Excuse me. yes that, that was, I was very happy about that. <laughs> what does that entail? I, I don't know that convention at all. So that convention is up in Frankenmuth, Michigan, mm -hmm. which it, it's a little German town that's actually pretty amazing. Um, and they also have the largest Christmas store in North America. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's it is very large <laughs> um but they I, I don't remember how many authors that they attend but that they have attend but basically the uh everyone nominates their favorites and then the ones with the i think it's like the top five with the most nominations will go to the final voting panel and I'm not sure who's actually on the voting panel, but we'll see. Wonderful. So yeah, well, it's good nice luck. that it's, 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 uh, I guess you could say it's more balanced than most because it's not strictly a popular vote. Mm -hmm. These popular votes where people come in and they're like, just have everyone that you know vote for this. It's, it's kind of a popularity contest at that point and not in the way of the book necessarily being a popular thing, mm -hmm. but just, you know, right. Popularity contest with the authors themselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The dread. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I actually know the, uh, the organizer of that one, uh, Stacy Rourke, which she has some very good books. If you're not familiar with Stacy, I am not. But so yeah, her, uh, she likes to rewrite um, or do spinoffs of old legends. So she did like Sleepy Hollow. Ooh. She did uh, a Raven spinoff from Poe. Uh, just neat stuff. Very neat stuff. Cool. 
definitely have to look into that one, too. I believe Crane is the first one in that trilogy. Definitely well (laughs) worth reading. By Ichabod? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Now, I haven't read the Steamborn trilogy yet. Uh, Would you like to tell us more about that one? So Steamborn is a young adult fantasy. It's mm-hmm. uh, It has a dystopian spin to it, and it also has steampunk elements. So all of these things made it really hard to decide how to market it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet, so, yes. <laughs> so I have, it's been out for like a year, and I'm just now finally starting to find some marketing legs on it. Um, but it's 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 a lot of fun. It's... If you're familiar with like uh, Hayao, Z- bleh, Hayao Miyazaki's films, um, it's very much in kind of that that whimsical feeling, and it's just an adventure with younger kids in situations that are much more dire than someone their age to have to deal with, mm-hmm. and uh, it's the kind of story that I really enjoyed reading when I was a kid. Nice. That works. Very cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, my my friend Mary Mancusi actually read it, and <laughs> she she calls it a uh, steampunk Starship Troopers, which <laughs> I, I love that kind of tagline. It's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's very catching. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, it's definitely one of my favorite things, and I do want to get back to that series and write more books in it. But the uh, the first three do form a complete trilogy. Okay, they go full circle then, right? Yes. Yes. Nice. Oh, I had another one. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Help! Help, Travis! Help! <laughs> oh, sure, help, Travis! Now, smack! <laughs> <Stop. laughs> You've only been no. working for 15 hours now, Travis. Uh, I know. <laughs> 16, 16 and a half now. Um, he's young. He's fine. <laughs> he's full of something. Um, <laughs> how long have you been writing, Eric? Uh, that's a hard thing to answer. Um, I've written it's off. It's really not. Incorporate math. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> We're over we're over ten, so it gets hard. Uh, okay, okay, understood, understood. <laughs> uh, I guess I really started writing. You could say seriously. I really decided I wanted to write novels in uh, two thousand and five. Uh, okay, and I wrote. I spent two two and a half years writing a really really terrible space opera. Uh, <laughs> but it was a great. It was a great learning experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it was in 2009 that I actually wrote the first Vesic book. Uh, okay. That went through several iterations. I learned about editing, and I actually ended up hiring an editor a few years later. So that when I published in 2013, I actually had three books written already before I released the first one, which actually worked out really well because it kind of kept a consistent release pattern um, up until I was ready to put the fourth one out. Okay. So as, as you have created these, these different uh, characters and these different plot lines and storylines, you know, you have you found yourself, really having a favorite or is that like asking a parent if they have a favorite child? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's tough. I, I think my, I think my favorite overall really is the Steamborn trilogy. Um, just because it, it, it comes back, it comes back to my childhood so much that mm-hmm. I just, I kind of love it. And the, the narrator we hired for that is, She's ridiculous, and she's phenomenal, and she really brings it to life. I mean, it's it's pretty – I think it's amazing, and I don't usually like to brag about my audio stuff. And, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, I will brag about my audio stuff. Oh, very cool. cool. Fun fact about her, uh, Saskia Marleveld, she, for one of the uh, – a couple of seasons of Pokemon, she was actually the voice of Officer Jenny. 
Oh, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's very cool. I'll, and that, that'll that get my kids involved. So, yeah. That's, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you need to add that to my marketing materials. Pokemon, yes. Oh, yes. Voice, voice of Officer <laughs> Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, as you... I know that all characters naturally evolve. Uh, and some authors let their characters evolve to the point of cessation. There's nothing more that they can do. We, you know, have to stop this particular character and vote. Do you see that happening with any of your characters or do you see them be continuing indefinitely right now? There's a... Uh... Like, I have ideas on how some of the series could end, but I also have ideas for many, many more stories. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's a hard call. Okay. It's definitely a hard call. I, I, I think something something that I can say that I've heard Patricia Briggs say on occasion is, like, I will not write these characters after I don't love them as much as I do now. Like, if I start getting bored and the books start getting stale... Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not going to continue on with it. I'll I'll put something in that'll wrap up all the plots and subplots and you know just kind of let it go. So we may come to the point where there's a who shot Vesic moment. You're just like I'm fed <laughs> up with you, Damien. I I think Papa did that with Dresden already, so I probably shouldn't do that. But <laughs> <laughs> we know who shot Dresden. <laughs> we do right. We do. We do. <laughs> That didn't remain a mystery for too long. <laughs> no, it really didn't. <laughs> oh, that's well. You know, it's funny because I, um, my daughter and I, like I said, you know, we were talking and she's creating these characters, and she's a huge Sherlock fan. I got her into you know the, the BBC Sherlock, and so now she's a Cumberbitch, like all of his followers are, <laughs> uh, and she's just you know enamored with him. And so, but I got her into reading the actual home stories, and you know. Of course, there's that you know the whole Reichenbach fall incident, and she's like, "Why did why did Doyle kill him in the first place?" And I said, "Well, I said Doyle killed him because he got tired of being known only for one thing. He got tired of being known only as the creator of Sherlock Holmes, and Holmes overshadowed him, and he just wanted to be rid of him." And she's like, "Do authors get to the point where they get like that?" <laughs> I'm like. Eventually, you, I said you have, yeah. I said you have to understand there had never been a, a a fictional character created that really had that type of following before. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it 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 took you know it was kind of the beginning of fandom. Uh, you know, people mm -hmm. were yeah. scurrying around, wanting the next installment and wanting to know and and what what was this and and what was going to happen. And I said it really probably one of the first fictional characters to take on a life of its own. So do you, and, and I used to use this analogy when I worked with, with small businesses uh, because I had been a small business owner and, I, and starting an ad agency and a PR firm and working and building it from the ground up and working those, you know, 20, 21 hour days and seven days a week. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, you, the, the way that I liken it is, is to Victor Frankenstein, you know, he wanted to create this creature. He created this creature. And then this creature tried to kill him. It, it really set out <laughs> to, to destroy Victor Frankenstein. And many times that's what happens when you are creating a small business. And I think many times authors start that process the same way. They, they, they wanting to breathe life into something. Have you found, you know, you said you started writing around 2005. So that's, that's what, 12 years. So you've got, you know, a little <laughs> over, you know, a little, you know, a little over a decade in writing and creating these characters. Have, has there come that time when you know, you're like, my God, Vesic's trying to kill me. He's trying to sniff, snuff me out. <laughs> <laughs> there, I can happily say that no, that has not happened. And I don't know if it might be because I kind of write at my own pace. I don't try to, uh, I don't try to do too much at once and hurry out releases. I kind of write when I want to write, so it it rarely actually feels like work. Um, Very good. 
Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm happy to say that that really hasn't happened. Now I will say that the editing process, if I have a sloppy draft that goes into editing, by the time you get done with the fourth or fifth draft on a book, it you you can occasionally want to throw it out the window. <laughs> but it's not necessarily that you want to kill the characters; you just want to throw the book out the window. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um. No, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt, Wendy. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just thinking, so when might we expect book number seven to come out? Book number seven. I have been... Oh, man. I've had too much bourbon. I almost <laughs> shot a spoiler out there. Um, <laughs> or another so one, I, bartender. <laughs> you're right. Um, so I have been sketching out ideas for what I want book seven to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've actually been going back and forth with my developmental editor. And I think we've got some really good ideas of where it's going to go and what the story's going to be, which means I don't necessarily have an outline, but I have enough key scenes that I know what I want it to be. So I'll probably start writing that pretty shortly, which would probably make for a... Don't hold me to it, but probably a release around August-ish. Nice. Okay. That's yeah, not bad so at all. Yeah. Not too. <laughs> I thought, well, this time next year we might be seeing it, but don't hold me to that. No, no, because <laughs> like last year, you know, I had I had a year in between Destroyer Rising and Rattle of Bones. Ah, okay. And I, that was because I wrote too much uh, the previous year. I wrote five full length novels that year. Holy cow. And on top of a day job, it just I just burned out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to get away from it for a while. <laughs> and then, of course, I have friends. Um, namely, I'm thinking of Carrie Ann Ryan, who cranks out a full-length novel every 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, she's, she is a machine. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I want to say she just released her 50th novel. Holy crap. <laughs> yes, sir. That is correct. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty amazing. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's not like she's putting junk out either. I mean, it's good stuff. Good deal. She's just. Know that, she uh, is a. She's a publishing machine. <laughs> she, no, she is a. She is a hardcore plotter, though. Like she swears by plotting, which I'm more of a pantser, like. I have a vague idea of where I want it to go, and then I just want to let the story unfold, which admittedly can be harder to edit at times, but but I love it. It's how I love to write, so no plans on changing anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eric, can you see the chat room at all? Uh, do I just go to that link? Um, I think so. I'll tell you in a second. Oh, okay. Well, I, I can read it. There's a, a Christopher. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna say it's Piper. Um, P- uh, uh, anyway, he's saying this is a good show. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> was that was that uh, Chris Hall? Oh, uh, it's a P E. Looks like I F F E R. Oh, the other Chris Piper. Oh, oh, him. Hello, other Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've got a. I, I posted the link to my uh, launch team, and uh, two of the, the. There's two guys named Chris on my launch team. Uh, Christopher Pfeiffer. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong, Chris. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said it first, fault. so it's my fault. <laughs> yeah, I was just following Wendy. It's totally yeah. her fault. Yep, all my fault. <laughs> again. <laughs> but then again, I am a Schindler, so I am used to people not pronouncing things correctly. <laughs> well, you were saying he's the other Christopher. I'm going, I ran into that this weekend. I went to dinner at a restaurant um, there in the, in the town where I work. And at, at first time, I'd actually had dinner there. I've gone in for appetizers and drinks, but actually went in. And I actually know the owner. And I told one of the, the servers, I said, be, be sure and tell Rick and Jason, that's father and son owners, uh, I said that, that Travis is here. 
And I said, hi. And so she comes back out and she's like, are you redhead Travis or radio Travis? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I sure ain't a ginger. I can tell you that <laughs> I'm a, I'm a pretty much black headed. So yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's radio Travis. That's, that's the one that's saying hi. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. I had, I had another thought here. I know. Look out. Run for your lives. Um, ah! <laughs> how difficult was it for you to write the death of the one character here? Uh, <clears throat> how do I say that? Oh, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, I know uh, who the talking one about. at the end of book five? Yes. Yeah. Awful. Yeah, I'll bet. Awful. It was hard yeah, to read. I, I, get, I get some people, some authors I know, they're like, Oh yes, I rather enjoyed killing that most beloved character off. <laughs> <laughs> and it's <laughs> like you're so evil. You yeah, dastardly no, that was, dastard. That was, yeah. <laughs> that was rough. Um but I, I must admit there is like uh there's a little uh tingle of I did that right when I get really horrible messages from people. <laughs> <laughs> like, how could you do that? And uh yeah, I, I was speechless for a little bit. I, I had to stop writing and, you know, clear the tears and go no effing way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was awful. But uh, had to be done, yeah. right? <laughs> Whoever hasn't read book five yet, you've got good stuff to look for. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You do uh, have a hanky close. <laughs> well, that's brutal, quite brutal. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, I, I got really, I got really good feedback on that, though. So that was, that was good. You know, my most, <laughs> the thing I get the most controversial, I won't say controversial messages, but the thing, the thing that seems to be most controversial to people is the exploding pigeons from book one. <laughs> I love uh, those. <laughs> that's too, that's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> So it's really gross, but you're laughing the whole time. You're kind of gagging. I know. Too. I know. I was like, but it's a necromancer. He probably doesn't feel bad. But, you know, what can you do? Well, it was a rumor that that's what happened when you fed them that, uh, that you know, rice and stuff. So. I know. I don't know if people, like, forgot the, about that rumor, but it really was. It was an exaggeration of that. Absolutely. And, Man, I, I can I appreciate kid, that. I remember that. When, when I was a kid and we would be at weddings, it was always about throwing rice. And then as we got a little bit older, people were like, oh, no, if you throw rice, those pigeons will explode. They'll and explode. it became like this. <laughs> it, it would hurt the birds. It could kill the birds, but they would not actually explode. Right. Um, <laughs> but it became like this urban legend that, like, you fed rice to pigeons, they will explode. And I think people either aren't aware of that old story or it just – Maybe they're too young to get. I don't know, but yeah, it definitely, it definitely missed the mark for some folks. But I, it still cracks me up. I oh, must yeah. admit. Yep, it was a good one. <laughs> I, I, I had a panel with uh, Larissa Ione once, and we we all had to talk about our most controversial scenes. <laughs> so that that came up, and I was like, I'm sorry, Larissa, because Larissa is a huge animal lover, and uh, she's like, as long as you don't kill the dog, I'm fine. Yep, like, yep. I've never killed a dog. <laughs> you can then you're good in our book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was impressed with, with uh, oh shoot, I don't remember which one went to that one place, <clears throat> book five, um, but, you know, the, the power and the amazing way it, it, performed in in that one alternate reality oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah that was that was fun to write you know that was i i had some interesting feedback about book five uh, aside from some of the major character deaths there was mm -hmm. uh you know book five takes place almost entirely in an alternate world right and there were a lot of people that were like that book was just way too acid trippy i didn't like it and uh I hadn't really thought about it, but mm -hmm. after I published it, about two months later, I was at a Patricia Briggs signing, because I do attend her events as a fanboy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was talking to the 
Um, she was talking to the crowd about the scenes in Fire Touched where they go into uh, what's essentially fairy. Mm-hmm. And she she was so careful not to make it seem too acid trippy. Like she still wanted it to feel grounded in the real world. And I was like, right. oh, right. that makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, lesson learned. But I, I still really love that book. It's one of my favorite books in the series. It's just, I probably could have done a little bit more in the real world that kept it grounded and less fantastical, I guess you could say. But, well, I, yeah, I, I thought re- it was good, though. It was still good. It, it was different, but it was a good different for me anyway. So I appreciate that very much. Nicely done. <laughs> Is Gaia going to show up in more books? There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, you know, he's, he's still carrying around that hand of glory that's fashioned out of her arm. So that's not that's not going anywhere anytime soon. Okay. All right. He's oh, already... Christopher had nice words. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, for those that of you is... just listening, that uh, it says... That was a great way to give readers a fully powered character with an easy way to power down for the rest of the stories. And that that is very true because it's otherwise it would have seemed really unbalanced if it all happened in the real world. Right. Yes. That that would have been really unsettling. <laughs> yes. Yes. It would. <laughs> that is Holy crap! Oh. <laughs> it's a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love Jasper. I do too. I want one. That's just my favorite. Actually, I may have one. Um, then again, it could just be the German Shepherd shedding. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite possible. <clears throat> um, so Jasper, uh, Jasper is in Phalius when that when the fairy city is destroyed. Right. And that that is actually one of the novellas. I don't know if it'll actually end up being a full length novella. It might just be a novelette. Mm-hmm. But that is one of the spin offs that I'm working on is Jasper and Ward facing down Ezekiel in oh, Valley. Yeah, awesome. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Kinda I like how it. Ward was done too. He got his name because he's got wards all over him. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's fun to write too. Mm-hmm. That, uh, those are a series of runes, correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, some of my... So, one of my favorite things with any of the runes and stuff are uh, the scenes with Kalbach in Rattle the Bones, mm-hmm. where he's explaining what the runes on the blood shield mean to Damien, and Damien just keeps saying, the one that looks like a dead guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That really amuses me. <laughs> Simplification. Keep it, keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. I was amused by that. <laughs> so, Travis, have you, uh, are you thinking about reading the books now to know that what we're I am. talking about? I bet. No, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> In all of your spare time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, the audio, uh, the audio I could do, I could pop the while I'm driving my three hour yes. round trip every day. I tell you what, that audio, uh, that audio is whisper synced. So the box set is on sale right now. The ebook is on sale for 99 cents, mm-hmm. but the audio book is whisper synced. So you can get the audio book box set. That's three novels for two bucks. Uh, oh, yeah, nice. you, you just doesn't get any yeah. better than that. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Mm hmm. And hours and hours of entertainment. I have a, I have a hours. tough time. Tough time with the audiobooks. My mind wanders. I, I need the focus of holding my tablet or a book book and well, I guess <laughs> And that's and that's that's totally normal. I mean that mm-hmm. like I love audiobooks for while I'm driving. Sure. Um, just good background noise. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, some people listen better. Or they learn better or absorb things better by reading, and some people are more auditory. So it just mm-hmm. kind of depends on where you fall. Uh, in the middle, I um, hands-on reading and um, and hearing. So we we basically just need a a movie then, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. That I can yeah. read along with <laughs> <laughs> subtitles. A movie with subtitles. I like it. I like it. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Oh so, darn it. Uh, odd, odd question, but what? Because you know, creative people have this very, very interesting way of creating their own atmosphere when they're writing and things like that. Yeah. What does your desk look like? <laughs> Where you write? What does your writing space look like? It may not be your desk. You may, you know, hell, you may sit at a coffee table and look out on, you know, on whatever what? the hell you look out on St. Louis. But you know, the arches. You look out at the arch. You know. Be- <laughs> <laughs> what, what 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 does your writing space look like my writing space is i i have an office um upstairs and it is full of comics and transformers and various <laughs> collectibles very not like a serene space at all <laughs> kind of chaotic and uh, my desk though which is like the best part has a statue of Brain from Pinky and the Brain. And there's some Michael Whalen art on the wall and uh, some Matt Wagner art. And then there's just a bunch of clutter. <laughs> the perfect and I also have a giant warble that sits next to me. A, a giant what? A warble. <laughs> a war- oh, okay, okay. It's like a big, giant stuffed thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> but he's he's actually like the size of a beanbag chair. He oh my gosh, jolly. that's huge! Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely it's a huge. huge. It's a huge warble. <laughs> and if you Google warble, be sure you do not misspell it because there's a horrible animal disease that's called warble that is not warable. It is so. Be sure you Google <laughs> warable. <laughs> Don't spell it wrong. You will not be able to unsee that. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, dear yeah. God, yes. <laughs> Which one? <clears throat> uh, e- either. Take your pick. I'm easy. <laughs> or better, just go to squishable.com and then search for Warable. That's safe. That's Should safe. you... Do you have to make sure you spell squishable right? Or does that bring up a whole different kind <laughs> of thing? That's a fair point. I don't know for Ooh, sure, yeah, but that's a yeah. fair point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to go there. <laughs> uh, well, I... Thanks, Travis. Now I've got a visual. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I... Goodness. Yeah. Uh-huh. What can I say? Speechless. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. All right. It's, it, so I, I have one other question for you, real quickly, Eric. What? Yeah. How, how do you occupy your spare time when you're not writing? What you, besides reading and gaming, and, <laughs> and 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 you know, fanboying out on Patricia uh, Briggs. Uh, you know what? <laughs> what? You're kind of whittling my life down. Here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> Besides, what happens when you it's what happens when you thrust yourself and, into the yeah. limelight? When you, yeah, when you thrust yourself into the limelight, this is what happens. Mm-hmm. You get whittled. <laughs> right. You can you can Google that, but you also have to be careful on the spelling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure. I'm sure. Um, so I I play a little bit of music. I, I play the cello, which I've kind of grown up playing, mm-hmm. and uh, I play the guitar a little bit. And I occasionally make squawking sounds through an ocarina. Okay. Much to the... Nice. <laughs> much is, that a, my, is that an Ozark folk music instrument? An ocarina? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, uh, I admittedly got into it after the Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that judgment I hear in your voice? No. no, it's just me going, I have no idea. I never watched that. <laughs> oh, oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, no judgment, just yeah. something I, I don't know anything about. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I collect comics. I collect a few books here and there. And I read the books, too. So. Oh, good. Uh, so you don't, just, you don't just collect them? Yes, yes. I also occasionally read them. <laughs> <laughs> he collects books and he collects the knowledge gleaned from the books. <laughs> so this is <laughs> unlike some unlike some people who have shelves and shelves of books and absolutely no knowledge or common sense whatsoever. We also occasionally go out to eat at restaurants. No way. It's a, ah, it's a glorious kettle. life. It's it's uh, yeah. Shut the fr- shut the front door. <laughs> <laughs> 
right. What's your favorite place in St. Charles to eat, then? Favorite place in St. Charles to eat. Ooh. Or is there a place in St. Charles anymore? Oh, there's all kinds of places in St. Charles to eat. I haven't uh, been there for a long, long time either, but that's where my mom and grandpa and everybody were from originally. Oh, right on. Yeah. yeah if you if you go down to Main Street, it's probably a lot like you remember it. I mean, it's a huge tourist area. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I might, I think I might have to say Trailhead Brewery is my favorite place to eat in St. Charles. Oh, fun. It's, uh, it is really good. Very fun. Nice. And there's a scene with Sam in Trailhead in one of the books. I feel like I should remember which book that is, but I don't. I feel like I should remember too, and I probably just I probably do remember, I just can't access it right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, now there was a one last book that I believe it was between five and six. Was it Rumors of War? Oh, Whispers of War. Um, Whispers of War, sorry yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. So, Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, so Whispers of War is just a... Uh, it's like a little exclusive collection of short stories for my newsletter subscribers. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has a novelette in it that is set between, I think, book four and five mm-hmm. that follows the blood mage Beth. Yes, and you you get a little insight into Beth and Cornelius, and uh, that's that's a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to write. And if you read that novelette, when you go to read Destroyer Rising, you also see the scenes where Beth gets tied into it from Damien's perspective as opposed to Beth's perspective, mm-hmm. and that was a lot of fun to do. Um, and there's some other various short stories in there, and and they actually take place in different parts of the timeline. So I think there was a story with Zola and the old man that takes place between, I don't remember if it's between Wolves and Winter's Demon or if it's between Days Gone Bad and Wolves. I think it's, that's yeah, terrible. Days Gone Bad and Wolves, I believe, because I, I, that's what I was thinking. Oh, that's when she met up with the old man and, oh, okay, okay, that's who she lent yes. it to for a minute. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. but right now I, I, I will probably publish that for everyone eventually, but right now I'm just... Using it to bribe people to get on my newsletter list. <laughs> That's where I got it from then. I kept going, well, I didn't see this really listed on anything, but I got it, so I read it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they're cute little stories, and then, you know, the, the other still kind of cute, but uh, more in-depth. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Christmas one, I, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, I like that one, too. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a Mason Dixon Christmas one. It's gonna be a bit longer. It should be fun too. Wonderful. Very I need cool. to get on your arc list. Yes, you should definitely. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm probably gonna send invites out for that again in the uh, fairly near future ish sometime. <laughs> <laughs> If you remember, and uh, <laughs> the moon rises well, I, at that one angle. And <laughs> yeah, thankfully I have an assistant who's like the best thing in history, and she's been really good about keeping up with things. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, yes. Sometimes I think about being one, and other times I think about needing one, so. <laughs> <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Yep, keep me in line. Somebody, please. <laughs> and it's not going to be Travis. <laughs> <laughs> That's just mean. That's just mean. <laughs> your your personality, we're, it just isn't there. <laughs> no. I mean, okay, you, oh. <laughs> wait oh. a minute. No, I mean it's not it's not uh, mean enough to keep me in line. How's that? Oh, <laughs> I knew I okay. said that wrong. <laughs> that was a good recovery. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hey, Travis, cheers, man. <laughs> cheers, Wendy. Oh, oh, oh. oh that, was good. that was good. Well, um, would you like to tell everyone how to get a hold of you? Uh, if When? It should be when everybody goes and reads your books now. 
Are you are you trying to get me to give you my address again? Because that we we've been over that already. I was trying. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, all right. right. So, That's all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Probably I've people. already traced the uh, the signal back from Skype, oh. so I, I know right well, where you live. Yeah, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> Travis, we're gonna have to talk about this. Uh, well, hey, yeah, but seriously. It, it was nice. It was a nice try with routing it through four different countries and then back into the states. <laughs> His VPN was supposed to be bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, uh, yeah, probably the easiest way to get a hold of me is just my Facebook page, mm -hmm. which is just facebook.com slash Eric R. Asher. Mm -hmm. uh, or, of course, my website. You can get to www.ericrasher or pretty much any social media platform. If you just put slash Eric R. Asher, you'll find me on there. Mm -hmm. Very good. Except Snapchat. I'm not on Snapchat for some reason. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not even. And I can't figure yeah, well. out. I can't figure out Instagram. It says I have to download an app, but I'm on my like big computer and I'm logged into my account. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> Travis. Well, no, I don't. I hell, I you know, I just started doing social media basically this past year. I had been out of the game for a while, so That's I. True. Yeah. I mean, I I don't do you know. Chap snat or you know <laughs> my my face or you know <laughs> space book or any of that stuff. <laughs> I uh, no the you know honestly for me the social media one that I really had because I I do Facebook I do have Ooh. Pinterest I do have Twitter Pinterest for me at the beginning was the most counterintuitive because none of the instructions as you were walking through made any sense. Everything right. else kind of made sense. Right. Pinterest, it was just like, who the, who the hell are they they writing this for? <laughs> I know I mean, it was it, at the beginning. It was like, am I pinning the page, the article? Right. Yeah. Article? What am I? I what know. am I doing? Yeah. I kept myself away from that one. I so. didn't need another time sucker. <laughs> And now, you know, now I find myself the social media guru at the radio station. So I'm overseeing the, the FM station's Facebook page and the AM station's Facebook page, which just launched today. By the way, go like uh, 1310 WDOC on Facebook, uh, nice the, the Pinterest page, the Twitter pages for mm -hmm. them, the Twitter pages for Vanjie Williams, the Facebook page for Vanjie, my political client, I was like, <laughs> Bill Bean's social media. I'm like the social media butterfly that didn't want to be. I didn't want to come out of the freaking cocoon. I wanted to stay in the cocoon and not spread my social media wings. But unfortunately, I've had to. It happens. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it does. <laughs> it's like everybody's on it now. <laughs> yep. Got to do it. Well, the fun part is, though, you do connect with old friends, you know, from high school that maybe moved That's across true. the country and um, made many good friends that way, too, or was reconnected with them always fun very true mm -hmm. so if you're ever in seattle washington go to spooked in seattle see june or ross and tell them i sent you yeah that sounds very interesting <laughs> i am gonna have to do that yeah i think you should i think we all should but, but definitely well, we're getting down on the time. Uh, we see we filled almost two hours there, Eric. <laughs> it wasn't even hard. Yeah, yeah. You, you told me it would go fast. I was like, you crazy. Well, that too, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so what's in the future? More, more books, more fun. Definitely more, more books. Uh, I have enough subplots and whatnot that are going on in the Vesic books right now to keep mm -hmm. that going for at least a few more books. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure as we go, more ideas will pop up. Um, so no plans to end that series right now. Very and good. then uh, Mason Dixon, of course, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see how that does as it comes out. I'm very excited about that. Like anything where I can bring a lot of focus to Missouri, uh, I really enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's an often overlooked area. <laughs> well, I agree. You know, you've got you've got like Laurel Hamilton with Anita Blake 
based in St. Louis Mm -hmm. and uh, not a whole lot other than that. Um, But then Steamborn, the Steamborn series, I definitely want to get back to eventually too. That's one of those things that's, uh, that's definitely a passion project. Mm -hmm. So I I definitely want to get back to that at some point. Uh, And then of course I have, a million and one other novel ideas. I just have to decide which ones I actually want to write. <laughs> always the, always the question there. Do yeah, I, I think uh, I think I'm probably going to do like a 1980s style horror novel. Um, that should be a lot of fun, and then maybe a 1990s style space opera. <laughs> yes, uh, that that should be a lot of fun. I. I... Um, I can't wait to see what that entails. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you remember uh, movies, like some of the classics, like The Last Starfighter and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so along, in that in that vein, but kind of okay. set in the 90s, I think it would be, it'd be interesting. I don't know why Buffy the Vampire Slayer and that one musical they did, it keeps popping into my head, though, so... <laughs> 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 Yes, it won't literally be an opera. It'll okay, be the... okay. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> what you need, what you need to do, is get with Mel Brooks so we can finally have Spaceballs Part Two. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I, I would be up for that. <laughs> yeah, that's what you need to do. <laughs> I was surprised he's still kicking. I know, but I'm glad he is. He's one me of my, too. Me too. <laughs> one of my one of my all time favorite directors and and writers of comedy i just i'm i'm a huge mel brooks fan (laughs) oh yeah well anyway um i don't have much else for i don't have any more questions or thoughts or eric anything else you wanted to share with us ah i think we covered it pretty much Uh, yeah Uh, kind of what i was thinking (laughs) yeah travis yes wendy do I have any thoughts? I have none. I I have no original. I have no original thoughts. I have no stolen thoughts. I have I have nothing at this point in time. Then then I suppose it's just about time to to it is about time so, close her yeah. down and uh, say our goodbyes and thank you everybody listening. Um, Christopher, thank you so much for getting into the chat and uh, Eric, thank you so much. This was fun. I really like the book, so um, thank, thank you. you. Mm-hmm. And thank you guys for having me again. It was, sure. it was a lot of fun. Well, just holler if you want back on. All right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and like I said, we do have the the cryptozoologist people coming on in the in the coming weeks. So you know you're definitely de- yeah. I definitely want to listen to that. That'll mm-hmm. be fun. <laughs> they all it. She always is. And Nick's always fun too. Yes, they both are. Mm-hmm. They both are. So, yep. Wendy, what is taking us out this evening? I believe The Mystic by Adam Jensen. Um, it fits okay. along in our magical mystery world. And um, I guess we'll, just, we'll call it an evening then. Thank you. Thank you again, Eric. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Wendy, have a great evening. Eric, have a great week. You too, Travis. You too, man. You too. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.
the rigs um, the calling or walking on water that's gonna i heard it on the trailer for that midnight midnight crossings texas or midnight texas that uh will be out in july i'll play that one real quick and then we'll call it an evening thank you
you all. Good night. Thank you for joining us tonight. You've been listening to Mystic Moon Cafe. Join us every Wednesday from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. On behalf of Wendy Schindler, this is Travis Short saying have a great rest of your week. The, 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 that's all, folks. Thank you.